Talk 8 The Five Sheaths and the Eight Bodies Brahman is without attributes and without form. Brahman is unattached and without change. It has no limits. That is what the sages say. How is Brahman? It has no shape. It is the natural state that remains when all of the four bodies, physical, subtle, the causal ignorance, and the great causal, or the knowledge of I am, are set aside. One who knows his true being is called Ishwara, or God. Whatever remains prior to being or knowledge is reality. After transcending these four bodies, whatever remains is formless, immutable, in its own natural state and steady. It never goes anywhere, nor does it come from anywhere. This is the absolute reality, part of Brahman, while the inner self is the I, the most subtle form of ego. The seer, the witness, the one who sees, and the one who sleeps is Ishwara, God. He is a concept conceived through intelligence. When he sleeps, he is quiet. The one who experiences the state of wakefulness does not disappear when experiencing the state of unconsciousness or sleep. Why can't we express joy in sleep? Because the mind and the intellect are in abeyance. Only when one wakes up can one express the experience. A woman's nose ring fell into the water. She asked a man to find it and inform her as soon as it was found. The man found the ring deep below the surface of the water, but obviously could not inform her at the moment he spotted the ring, as he was completely submerged. As water and fire are antagonistic, the power of the deity of fire, which enables speech, was absent when he was submerged. Thus, he could inform the lady that the nose ring was found only after he came out of the water. In a similar way, one cannot express anything in deep sleep because the instruments that are required for expression are unavailable. The mind is not involved during sleep, hence it cannot say anything. A man climbed up some stairs. If his mind was not focused on the number of stairs he climbed, then he would not be able to tell the exact number. But the self knows that he has climbed the stairs. The self exists during sleep, during wakefulness, and during samadhi, conscious absorption in the self. But who experiences sleep and samadhi? Only the self. And if the self was not there, who would be there to experience sleep? So self is consciousness, 
the essence of awareness. And prior to that is para Brahman. The inner self is the true I, which is God, and consciousness is his eternal nature. He resides in the hearts of all beasts and birds, all deities and demons, all names such as Ram and Krishna. If he is not there, the living being becomes dead like log. When he disappears, the ears and eyes and nose are all useless. When that Lord disappears, all objects become inanimate. All grandeur is because of this inner self. If that vanishes, then all perishes. It is due to that that there is worldly activity as well as spiritual understanding. All this is due to his existence. During the time that the inner self exists, gods and demons and such also exist. But if he leaves, people will not touch the dead body. It is the inner self that imbues the body with godliness. One who calls this body as God is none other than this self. The one who writes the Vedas is also the inner self. As long as this inner self retains interest in worldly ideas, he is the jiva, the individual. But if he starts talking about knowledge, he is Shiva. When jiva and Shiva both disappear, what remains is para Brahman. A man who engages in manual labor is a laborer. If he works as an officer, he is an officer. Or if he works as a judge, he is a judge. But when he retires from everything, he is para Brahman. There is a void that is emptiness or ignorance. And beyond that is the fourth body, Turya, which is of the nature of God. When a man worships a multitude of gods and goddesses, like Vishnu, that worship goes only straight to the inner self. Because Vishnu is in the form of knowledge in the body. And the body is but a corpse without the knowledge. After worship, the offerings to that God are consumed only by the worshippers. If this Lord, the inner self, makes that God, an idol of God, worthy of belief, he appears real for a lifetime. Each being, knowingly or unknowingly, worships the inner self alone. But he does so without understanding. Therefore, he is a jiva, or ignorant being. If he worships with the full understanding that he is God, he becomes Shiva and is one with knowledge, Yana. All gross physical manifest bodies are actually living temples. But due to ignorance, children enjoy themselves by building a make-believe house out of stones. 
They take a small rock which serves as a utensil for drinking water. Another stone may serve as a bowl. And then another stone is put up as God. In the same way, ignorant people worship God by creating idols. Yet the real God has consciousness or awareness. The idol has no consciousness. And only a fool worships an idol. Fool here means ignorant person. Those that have no knowledge of self, no atma jnana, have to worship an idol. But if they were to recognize just who those idols represent, how wonderful it would be. The one who recognizes this is the knowledgeable one, Ayani. The ignorant man creates a make-believe God and worships him, while the Ayani recognizes the God of gods that is his own self and then offers his worship. Shankaracharya called the inner self, that is the fourth body, the original illusion, Mula Maya. God may have infinite number of names, yet truth is only one. For example, if a child calls his own father uncle, does it mean that the man loses his fatherhood? Through the medium of this God as self, one will realize the natural state of the Supreme God, Paramashwara. If the abidance in this God becomes steady, one will realize Parabrahman. This God as pure consciousness is in the form of the power of knowing of willpower and the power of matter. This means that he is constantly moving. If this mundane existence is ignored, then one will remain in this natural state. The statement that Lord Vishnu, as consciousness, incarnated ten times, implies that he began playing through all of the ten senses. To do something means to incarnate. When he becomes God, he realizes his ignorance. God is unsteady, while Parabrahman is steady. To know the nature of both the steady and the unsteady is true knowledge. The followers of Vedanta get completely confused when they try to think about this subject. The inner self is the base of the entire universe. Yet the true origin of everything is the original impulse of pure awareness which has no beginning or end. On one side, the world is created, and on the other, everything vanishes. If one's true nature is known, the inner self disappears. The steady always exists, and the unsteady perishes. The steady is immutable, while the unsteady is forever changing. That self which is unsteady has passions and changes, has desire and anger, greed and pride. If someone calls him the inner self, he swells with pride. And if another calls him bad, he becomes sad. 
This indicates that the inner self is subject to change. One who considers the changeless and the changing as the same is but a beggar. Such a one is caught in the realm of the five elements. The essence of the Vedas is tat tvam asi. You are that. The self is beyond the four bodies. There are various methods for explaining the Vedas. Brahman and Parabrahman are proved after debating and battling a billion times. Yoga means union. Paramatman is covered by the five sheaths or koshas. First, the sheath of food, the physical covering, which is like a coat, is worn on the outside to protect the self. This is the body consisting of blood, flesh, and bones, and hair, produced out of food. Secondly, this sheath of vital airs, where the self is covered with five vital airs, or pranas. And there is the sheath of mind. This is the cover of mind along with concepts. And then there is the sheath of the intellect, the cover of the intellect which discriminates based on concepts such as good and bad, or that one is of a certain state. And then there is the sheath of bliss. This is the cover of rest or deep sleep when one forgets oneself. One is happy when one has forgotten everything that produces unhappiness. If one forgets everything, then there is bliss. One is happy because one has forgotten all sorrows. Where does the jiva, the ego, find happiness? The answer is in forgetfulness. Unknowingly, he enjoys happiness and sleep. A saint in Indian mythology symbolizes our mind, Narada. He goes around in all the three worlds, namely the gross physical, the subtle and causal worlds. This mind sings the praises of the Lord but also enters into arguments and quarrels. He always has a begging bowl under his arm. The begging bowl is his stomach. Whether one goes to the office or to a place where devotional songs are sung, it is sure that Mr. Mind will take the begging bowl along with him. The self is beyond all states. Recognize the five sheaths explained. It is said that 330 million deities reside in the body. All of those are for the sake of the body. 25 elements making up the subtle body, the five sheaths of the self, and the three attributes or gunas of Raja, Tama, and Sattva make up these 330 million deities who live in the city of Kashi, which symbolizes the body. Only after transcending the five sheaths does one reach Vishwanath, the ruling deity of this city. Then the body itself is Kashi, a holy place for you. Whatever is in the microcosm, the jiva, is also in the macrocosm, God or Shiva. Thus we employ countless ruses to prove that your true nature is Parabrahman. The jiva appears only within the realm of words, 
and therefore whatever is expressed in words can only serve as a pointer to reality, as words can never truly convey reality. What is the nature of God? God also has four bodies. The first, the gross physical, is huge and made up of five elements. The subtle body is the 330 million gods, like Brahmu, Vishnu, and Shiva. This subtle body of God is the golden womb, and the causal body of God is the unmanifest. The great causal body of God is the primordial illusion, Mula Maya. This is Sat Chit Ananda, as existence, consciousness, and bliss, which is the highest attribute of God. The Jiva likewise has four bodies, the gross, the subtle, the causal, and the great causal bodies. The first three can be described. The great causal body cannot. From the earth comes the gross body. You may say the body is part of that. The air that is outside and inside the body is one and the same. So how can this air belong to you or me? It belongs to everyone. Desire and the senses make up the mind. The deity is the moon. The mind or moon is treacherous to the guru. It does not go to him. The moon is excused of treachery to the guru. That is, it does not want to get self-knowledge from the sun because it will die in the process. The senses may be termed as Lord Indra. Rain means the desire to drink. To perform a sacrifice means to prepare a good meal and eat it. And then it rains. That is, one has a desire to drink. Then man is nourished as his senses are appeased. Like how the earth grows when it rains. The saying Gautama Buddha means the best among the senses. And Ga means senses and Utam means best. And Ahilya, his wife, is the body which nurtures the senses. Both have the same expression and also the same goal. Therefore, the Jiva and Shiva are one. The Jiva is really none other than Brahman. Though the jiva has four bodies, Shiva also has four bodies. The eighth body, or the primal illusion, is steady. This is his primordial nature. Parabrahman is that which cannot be expressed in words. The god of the transitory is Ishwara and that God's devotee is also transitory. Both of them are perishable, and hence false. Therefore, both Jiva and Shiva are ignorance. Do not get tempted by them. All of these eight bodies are perishable and false. One who realizes this and discards both Jiva and Shiva is the knowledgeable one, the Yani.